let's do a garden tour. I'm super proud of both my fall crops this year as well as what I grew this year. So it's gonna be like a garden tour slash harvest tour. I don't, yeah. Anyways, let's get into it. Actually first, I'm gonna put my bunny hug on because your girl is really cold. Um, I'm trying to be tough and I'm wearing black as like a morning cover color for the fact that summer is done. Before we go there, let's talk about um, some unique stuff that I grew. So overall, the harvest this year was okay. Um, I haven't actually harvested my carrots yet because my carrots I like to put through like a little bit of a frost because it actually increases the flavor. I also haven't touched my beets because <laughs> I have literally been working my day job like a slave. Um, I'm staying very late at nights lately. I've been traveling a lot for my day job and it's just left like pretty big holes in my uh, normal schedule where I would like preserve my beets or preserve like so as you can imagine it's just it's been a lot and beets are one of those ones where you can't really touch unless you're going to deal with them quickly because they do wilt up pretty pretty darn fast but my mother-in-law Marion, you're probably, I know you're watching this, um, has been an incredible help because she came over and she just took charge of the whole entire front yard for seed saving to harvesting potatoes to harvesting the tomatoes I had left over. You name it. The woman really, really did a great job and I, I truly appreciate it because normally it would be my mom or my grandma that would be coming over to help me out. But as you guys know, they passed away last year. And Marion, my mother-in-law, has really stepped up to the plate. It's actually kind of funny because my mom and my grandma, oh, I'm gonna cry. Um, my mom and my grandma used to call me pumpkin because like, my hair was like more orangish, if you will, less red. And so they always used to call me pumpkin. My favorite season is Halloween and uh, my mother-in-law brought me over some pumpkins and she's like a pumpkin for a pumpkin and then all harvest and slash my yard work season she's been calling me pumpkin it's just kind of feel make me feel a little bit better uh because it hasn't been very fun for me anyways I think I was like still traumatized last fall with my grandma just because she just recently died and that was like my rock because my mom had addictions and so her loss was probably the biggest loss for me. So I think last year I was just in a fog, so it didn't really affect me that much. But this year I'm kind of like, oh God, I miss my, miss my family uh, because half of them died. My grandma LeBrock died too. So yeah, not great. Any hoosers, this one probably hands down is one that I'm the most proud of. This is like a warty pumpkin. So I got these seeds off of West Coast. I will say this actual pumpkin is like 100 plus days, 120 some days growth. I'm in a zone three. My number of growing days is like 90 something. So it was a feat. I started it indoors. I put it into the greenhouse and then I put it out into a cold frame and then I heated said cold frame and I babied the bejesus out of this. Now it should have been slash could be bigger but for my environment i'm actually pretty proud of this this was kind of if you guys watched my videos previous i spoke about how you should always try at least one plant you've never grown before or kind of like the plant that you're like i wish i could grow but i can't grow in my environment and just try and this is hands down what it is it was just actually my goal was artists and pumpkins in general because i just find them so cute Anyways, this one worked out wonderfully. I did do green ones as well. They didn't turn out as well. So this one I'm super proud of. Now the other one, oddly enough, is actually gourds. So I planted mixed gourd pack and I literally got like, there's white ones, you name. I have buckets of these things. I direct sowed these. I didn't even start them indoors at all or in the greenhouse. I literally direct sowed them as a Hail Mary with seeds that are about two years old. I actually bought these seeds fall of 2022 and I didn't plant them obviously in fall. I didn't plant them in 2023 because my mom was in the hospital. And then I decided this year like, 
screw it. I'm gonna pop them in the ground, see what happens. Turns out they germinated. Turns out they made some really, really, really cool uh, things. So I wanna save the seeds from these. I didn't think from seed these were possible. If you did not know, the outside is bitter slash not good. The inside tastes like pumpkin and can be treated as though it is pumpkin. They're usually just decorative mostly but regardless i'm gonna smash these once the fall season's done and i'm gonna save the seeds out of them so that is what i'm doing with those or that's what i've harvested from those tomatoes okay so i have harvested so many tomatoes this year i have freezer bags full and i still have freezer bags full from last year and i need to make tomato sauce and i freeze them because it's easier to core and it's actually easier to remove the skins on. I'm gonna do a video on how I make my tomato sauce, but regardless, this is kind of like the tail end of what I have. These have been hit with frost a few times now. So, I mean, yeah, that's, I've got so many tomatoes that if these all freeze, I'm not gonna be, my, my feelings are not gonna be hurt. Overall, t potatoes didn't do great this year. Um, what else didn't do good? My cucumbers did hor horrible. My cucumbers were horrible. Um, my squash, my squash were meh. That includes winter and summer squash. So yes, I have the pumpkins and the gourds, but my butternut and my spaghetti, which usually do okay, didn't do well. My cucumbers did junk and my zucchini. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I had like one zucchini the entire year. I have never, never, in my entire life those words have never exited my mouth but this year they did uh so that's not ideal not my fave uh what else beans did okay ish it was just a normal harvest it wasn't like anything to go crazy over like i'm not like oh yeah beans were great this year string beans um even just like your regular beans like there wasn't anything that i was like these were awesome. Um, they were mediocre. Like they were just normal. They were normal. I'm not upset with the harvest. I'm not like glowing about the harvest. Peas, my sparrows took out as always. Sunflowers. Sunflowers were popping this year. I literally had plants that were like 12 feet freaking tall. I, I swear to you, they were huge. Um, teddy bears, you name it, all of it. So yeah, those were all pretty darn good. Um, I did the video on leaf mold. I showed you how I'm composting kind of like on a large scale. I'm gonna start, I gotta clean that out. That's the pond, uh, but I want to start doing cold plunges because Andrew Huberman tells me to. And I will listen to anything that man says. Uh, yeah, let's go to the front here. I'm gonna show you what my fall gardens look like because they're in the front because that's where all the sun and the heat is. I feel like I showed you my sunflowers like a while back in other videos but yeah like look at how tall they did so well this year um okay so let's talk about what's remaining in the garden so these are my garlic uh, i did the video on how to choose the size of the bulb the type of the bulb how to grow them anyways they are sprouting because we had some rain that is totally fine they're going to sprout they're going to die off they are a bulb so they're going to make it through the winter and then they're going to grow and be happy and healthy so that is totally okay a little bit of root activity i'm not going to complain about they're pretty big to be honest okay so next one is actually going to be this little raised bed here so i do have these on because i do need to put my freeze cloth on and I've been forgetting to put the freeze cloth on for a while now. So I need to get on that because it's been freezing, but these are all kind of like freeze tolerant plants, if you will, for my fall garden. Okay, so inside of this, we have spinach and then we have, no, spinach and then kale. The cotyledons are turning yellow, cool, whatever. The spinach is doing fine. We have Swiss char in here as well. 
I'm going to cover these over. Uh, there's a few keys when it comes to actually fall gardening that you need to take into consideration. Okay, so number one that you need to take into consideration is that you have less daytime hours. So right now it's about 4.30 and it is getting dark. Like the sun is actually setting where I am. So because the daylight hours are fewer, unless these pick it up here the next little bit, I'm gonna be in a situation where I'm gonna have nothing. So typically speaking, these would be started at a time when there's enough light that they can put on a ton of biomass. And then the idea would be to kind of use this setup as almost like a live refrigerator. Ideal world, they would be kind of not, maybe not that big, but they would be a little bit larger like the Swiss Char R. And then the cover is going to just protect them and you would harvest them as needed. The idea that you're going to get active growth, particularly in our climate here in Canada, it's not possible because there's not enough light. There's not enough photosynthesis to help the plant put on the, the root mass and the actual foliage. So this, this is sketching me out. Like I'm close to happy, but like I wish a little bit quicker. Am I gonna terminate the, the actual garden? No, but I'm also not gonna put in grow lights. So we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated on what happens with this. Okay, so the next one I have is actually like a physical cold frame and not like a hoop hut. The chickadees, the chickadees are a happy, happy breed out here. Okay, so this, cold frame i feel like you guys have seen a million times we got it here we do have some stuff we have some kale we have some purple spinach and same scenario we have some sage so this i'm going to treat again as a refrigerator scenario happy and healthy despite some frost that has hit and these guys here really need to pick it up because otherwise we're going to be in the trouble zone now the reason why these are farther behind despite the fact that the they were started the same time as the other ones it actually comes down to uh the idea or the fact that these are getting less light so like i said with these fall croppings your limiting factor really isn't actually the temperature if you pick the right plants there's lots of plants that do just fine in the colder temps what your limiting factor is is always going to be the amount of light you can get now you could put grow lights in these and the grow lights would actually keep things going a little bit longer or get things moving a little bit faster this one here I might experiment with an actual grow light only because I know I can keep this container or this area happier, healthier, more watered, longer if it gets very cold very quick compared to the actual one that I would use fabric with. So that's kind of where I'm at with like the actual fall cropping. If you guys are doing fall cropping, let me know what you're growing. Um, my, like I'm doing pretty basic, like I'm doing winter kale winter spinach that's pretty much it and like the odd herb like sage so anything that has like a little bit of a thicker um leaf i'm going for so yeah i'm just gonna show you guys this this is my garlic so right here's my garlic you can see we got a little bit of action that's cool that's great that is sage right there that wasn't in a cold frame so you can see how that cold frame actually is working compared to that because that sage is like super drooped out and then here is the beets and the carrots i was telling you about that i had not yet harvested because i haven't had time so this one i'm pretty sure i did a video on like horrible fails um the actual container itself didn't like there was cardboard boxes put in here and the cardboard bo boxes co uh, collapsed the person who filled this i didn't realize that that's what they were doing but regardless it's cool it's fine i'm not actually upset about it at all but uh the resulting factors is that i did end up with like not <laughs> the greatest harvest out of this bed but you know what next year we're gonna fix it so this is kind of what i mean it's not horrible so this is bad by ashley terms this is not bad by like your average human being terms if that makes any sense at all i'm not trying to tell my own harm but that is like not like i usually get a little bit bigger than that so yeah i need to harvest these 
I haven't had time, but I need to harvest those. And that is my carrots. These have been pulverized by uh, frost at this point. So I definitely need to get these out. Like I said, they taste better. They taste way better when they've at least been frosted for like a period of time. Um, like this one. Yeah, these are actually, okay, so the ones I planted in here are like the short, um, they're called micro carrots. I, if I can find the package, I'll send them to you. They're actually quite delicious, if I'm being totally honest. But yeah, so that's what those guys look like. Those are like really good. Um, if you guys want to see videos on kind of how I preserve stuff, I have one video coming out next week um, on how I actually do my tomatoes. So I use frozen tomatoes. I don't core. I don't peel. And I actually, actually let him kind of sit for several hours unattended. And by several, I mean like overnight. Because your girl's busy. So, if you guys want to see that, stay tuned. If you want to see something else or otherwise I do things, let me know. I'm doing a lot of freezing this year, not a lot of canning so far. Because it's been a little bit of a warmer fall. Things are starting to cool down, so I'm more inclined to actually do cold the, the stuff that's going to warm things up. If you want to share your actual harvest videos or your photos, send them to me over on Instagram or the Facebook group. It's another place to actually get the entire Geek Cruise opinions. And if you need more fall activities, check out that video right there. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Hi. Hi.